is that God's perspective transcends the test in history of humankind. Well, if it's good for soccer, well, it's good for your finances. Is it good for your business? Is it good for your relationships? Is it good for everything that you do in your life to have wisdom combining with knowledge? If you are saying, I'm just gonna wait for current technology or current human wisdom and understanding and knowledge and education to get me to where I need to go, well, guess what? It's gonna be outdated. So what if I told you that reading all of these books would save you a lot of time and energy and money by reading this one book. What book is this? It's the book of the Bible called Proverbs, written by the richest and wisest king, highly regarded as the richest and wisest king who ever lived, King Solomon, by reading a book of Proverbs? What? Yes. In this episode of the Seven Figure Squad, I'll explain three reasons why you should consider reading the book of Proverbs to help you become a first generation cash flow, faith based millionaire. Starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jeter. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Sapala here, healing to you from Dallas, Texas. In this episode, I'm going to share with you my reasons studying from this Jeremiah study Bible from David Jeremiah. He's got this great study Bible, and this is my reference for this episode of why you should highly consider reading this book of Proverbs to help you become a first generation cash flow millionaire. But before we do that, I want to remind you to make sure if you haven't done so to subscribe to our YouTube channel, because our next goal for this channel is to cross 150,000 subs. So therefore we can cut a church a charity or a nonprofit that you and I will nominate and crowdsource to give them $5,000 from this YouTube channel in our community to that church, charity, or nonprofit. So please, if you haven't done so, please subscribe. So how many times have you heard that term? I need the skills to pay the bills for sure. And one of the best ways to acquire those skills that you might think, oh, do I need a trade skill? Do I need to be a plumber? Do I need to be an electrician? Do I need to be an engineer, an attorney, a doctor, an entrepreneur in the uh, technology world? No, the wisdom and the skill base that we're talking about is literally written from the Bible. When we're looking at God using wisdom. So why do you say why, Matt? Because God even used wisdom to create order out of chaos. Even King Solomon, who wrote the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes in the Song of Solomon, he even put there in his work that God used wisdom, God used skill to create order out of chaos, to literally create the word. If you reference Proverbs chapter 8, verses 22, verses 31, we'll put the links below. Read it for yourself what God did and how he embodied King Solomon and gave him wisdom and gave him knowledge and gave him an insight of how he even created the world to allow kingdom to rule God's people for his 40 year reign. And how God said, listen, if I did this to create the world, maybe you should consider using these rules and instructions and values and principles to rule my people. And so therefore, King Solomon did. And quite frankly, the book of Proverbs is a bunch of lessons, what they call pithies, I'll explain that here in a second, to equip the young and the naive and unexperienced for life. And by the way, I don't mean the word naive to be a disrespectful term. Sometimes we just don't know what we don't know. Would you agree? When I first had a kid, I didn't know necessarily how to raise a kid. By the time we had a second kid, we knew exactly what to do. Same thing too with your finances, same thing too with your, uh, your relationships, same thing too with your businesses. When you do something for the very first time, you may not know exactly what to do and everything is chaotic, everything is all over the place. But the second time you do this, if you access wisdom, if you access your experience, well, guess what? You know how to do things a whole lot better. And what did King Solomon do in the book of Proverbs? He is here to equip the young and the naive and those who are unexperienced to have success in their life based on everything they had to do in their life. Because back in the day, it's very connected that wisdom and knowledge were put together when teaching the next generation. That wisdom and knowledge were put together when teaching. So therefore, I love watching soccer. When the players come out and they get introduced to the game, I love seeing this symbolic act of the professional player walking on the field with a younger player right next to them. Because what does that do to that younger player? It stretches their vision. They're learning how professional acts. They're learning how a professional game and a professional uh, a stadium looks like. 
they're stretching their vision of what can be possible and they're learning the nuances, the little soft cues that the professional player is doing to take the field and approach the game of soccer. Well, if it's good for soccer, well, it's good for your finances. Is it good for your business? Is it good for your relationships? Is it good for everything that you do in your life to have wisdom combining with knowledge by working side by side with somebody? Some of the biggest frustrations I face when coaching entrepreneurs or when seeing entrepreneurs who are very excited, they're very fired up about their endeavor. They're very fired up about what they're doing. Well, God bless them, more power to you. But the moment you ask them about their next move, their next two, three, four moves, uh, how to scale their business, uh, how to raise capital, how to make sure that they go from this part of the city to the next part of the city or next part of the country, next part of the region. And what's worse is not only do they not know, they don't want to listen to you because they know everything. They got it. And uh, I've had to learn the hard way many, many times. Perhaps it's the fault of the lack of communication. But back in the day, wisdom and knowledge used to go hand in hand. But today, it is far removed from that. Think about our school system. Think about the educational system. For the most part, what do we do as parents? We outsource the teaching of our children for a better part of the day to somebody else. To somebody else that you hope has the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding to teach them not only a subject matter, but also the soft skills and how to live life and how this approaches to life. I remember my biggest frustrations in school. Like, why do I gotta learn math? Why do I gotta learn algebra? Why does X equals Y equals Z, whatever? Why do I gotta understand the Pythagorean theorem? For what? It's so confusing to me. And I never had a math teacher in high school break down why I should learn a particular subject matter. I never translated it to, hello, it's gonna help you in business. Hello, it's gonna help you problem solve. Hello, it's gonna help you do a lot of things in life. And that's why you're going through these problems and issues right now. And perhaps that's why you should study. Perhaps that's why you should do your homework. Perhaps that's why you should get preparation to pass six exam. But nobody ever taught that to me in school, why I should do what I do. And then push comes to shove. And then I realize I'm actually a pretty decent student. Why? Because when I left the Marine Corps, I come into the field of business and I realize I'm in the insurance industry. I'm in a financial service world. I better get good in math. I better get good at scaling my business. I better get good at projections and calculations and those type of things and understanding spreadsheets and how to understand bars and graphs to have it in my favor to have a better opportunity to succeed, to focus my attention on certain areas that I have let slip through the crack so I can shore up my leaks. What helps me do that? Math, data, analytics. We see, that's where wisdom and knowledge go hand in hand. Whereas today, wisdom is sometimes, for most of the better part of our educational school system, it's separated from knowledge. They're like two different things. How many times have you heard somebody say, man, I'm more of an academic. I'm an academic. So I've studied this in a lab. I've studied this in school. I've studied this in a classroom, but I don't have what? I don't have wisdom. And what is wisdom? Wisdom is knowledge times experience, the know-how, the understanding of a subject matter. How many times have you heard somebody say, well, I know this about this subject matter and this subject matter and this subject matter, but it puts it to real test and into real-time life experience, a real-time life case study. It doesn't fall through. Why? Because it was great in the classroom, but doesn't have any real-world experience and it didn't hold up in a real-world type of situation. Because Proverbs discusses why wise and being wise in a situation or wisdom is being humble. Especially when you understand God is speaking to you. Wisdom in the presence of God. Let's take a look at this proverb here to get a little taste and flavor of what Proverbs talks about. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, it reads like this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. Let me continue reading on 11 and 12. For by me your days will be multiplied, and years will be added to your life if you're by for Him. But if you're wise... You are wise for yourself. If you scoff, you alone will bear it. In other words, you want to walk with God as a first generation faith-based millionaire, or you want to walk alone with God? Who do you want as your partner, me, myself, and I, or me, myself, and God? Your choice, and that is what King Solomon is attempting to get through to you. And how does King Solomon do these? Again, I was describing the word earlier, it's called a pithy, which is described as a two-line saying of a comparison and contrast, a two-line saying of comparison and contract. You want me to upgrade it to today's terms? It's Twitter. 
The reason why people love Twitter because there's short sayings and short updates done quickly in real time. And King Solomon, quite frankly, had over 3,000 proverbs. If you reference 1 Kings uh, chapter 4, verses 32, there's over 3,000 proverbs or 3,000 pithies that King Solomon wrote to give a blessing of wisdom and understanding to the younger and unexperienced generation. So with all that being said, let me connect the dots here. Number one, consider reading the book of Proverbs if you want to be a first generation cash flow, faith-based millionaire because it's filled with wisdom, not only for you, but for everyone. Your business partners, your employees, your family, your parents, your cousins, the people you loving care about, the people you're associated with. Consider that the first nine chapters of Proverbs is a series of discourses of what wisdom is and how you should acquire it and how you should use it and how you should implement it into your life and how you should embrace it for the rest of your life. The second part of Proverbs is that King Solomon describes many ways to live with skills and wisdom from God's perspective. Well, Matt, I wanna do it from my perspective, you know, from, from my neighborhood, you know, from, from my upbringing, from, from my perspective, uh, from my deal. Well, why just you? The, the reason why I've chosen to say, you know what? Okay, I've tried it my way. I've tried it a human way. But if I understand Proverbs and embrace wisdom, what King Solomon is attempting to say to you is that God's perspective transcends the test in history of humankind. And if it was good back then, it was good today. How many times have you been frustrated that uh, your iPhone that you buy, next thing you know, it's already outdated a year, year and a half later, and you want to get the next iPhone. A year and a half later, you want to get the next iPhone. I believe uh, at the recording of this video, they just announced a new uh, iPhone 13 is being launched here in September. Well, question for you is, have you figured all the functionality of your current iPhone? And next thing you know, in a month and a half here, it's gonna be replaced by next iPhone, and the temptation for you to upgrade to the next iPhone will be there. So the bottom line is, if you are saying, I'm just gonna wait for current technology or current human wisdom and understanding and knowledge and education to get me to where I need to go, well, guess what? It's gonna be outdated. It's gonna be upgraded and outdated. But if you impart upon the skills and the wisdom of God's perspective, which has stood the test of time, good economy, bad economy, people had goats as currency, people have Bitcoin as currency, all these values and principles will work back then and it's working currently to today. I've witnessed this firsthand, not only in my life, but many of the people that we coach and mentor throughout the country and throughout those that watch our YouTube channel. And last but not least, what King Solomon encourages you to do is take wisdom to heart. Just don't read it and have it fill your head. Have it fill your head and have it sink into your heart, your soul, your spirit. There's a story here that we'll read and share together here in Proverbs chapter 24, verses 30 to 34. It's about him walking by a house and as he's walking by this house, it's out of order. The trees and grass, everything's overgrown. The person, the lazy homeowner, the person who owned it, wasn't taking care of it. And as he was walking by it, he was initially judging it. He was initially saying, man, what's wrong with this guy? He's not taking care of his own house. So let's search this and read this together. I passed by the field of a sluggard, by the vineyard of a man lacking sense. And behold, it was overgrown with thorns. The ground was covered with nettles, and a stone wall was broken down. Then I saw and considered it. I looked and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. You see, the typical person, they just walk by a house, they'll complain, hey man, let's call the homeowners association, Let's, let's tell somebody, this guy's not taking care of his house. This guy's not taking care of his property. This guy's not taking care of his household. But King Solomon says, by looking upon that, he received instruction that God came in and gave him perspective, which is what I hope that you do when you watch this video, that King Solomon hopes that you do when you read scripture in Proverbs, in Ecclesiastes, in his sayings, is that you look at life, your finances, your relationships, the thing that means the most to you from God's perspective, because Everybody else would just look at the house and say, man, let's write that guy up a ticket or let's complain, let's tell our neighbor about him. But King Solomon says that, you know what? If you uh, take it easy, you take a little bit, two more lazy days, you just kick back and relax and you forget to get to work, man, your life and your house is going to be ruined. And many of you who have the aspirations for becoming a first generation cash flow, faith-based millionaire, if you rest too much, 
you act too lazily, you act like a sluggard, all those different things that Proverbs talks about, your aspirations to having that type of lifestyle, aspirations to have that type of contribution to society to make God's name known, will sadly fall short. And I would not like that to happen to you. So that being said, guys, I'd love to know your thoughts, your comments, your follow-ups, your feedback. What are you guys thinking? What's on your mind? What was your greatest takeaway from this video? If you say, hey, Matt, I'm going to affirm with you that I'm going to read Proverbs and seek wisdom and understanding, put it in the comment section below. I am reading Proverbs. I am reading Proverbs. Before I let you go, please check out this video right here. Three biblical habits that made me a millionaire, and it can also potentially make you one as well. And this other video here about the fastest way for you to lose money in everything that you work for. I hope you avoid that. So I hope you watch this video too as well. That being said, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys. Oh, my God.